Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Black Heart is signing black in again asking you to hit that share button. Thank you if you hit like or subscribe. Thank you more if you hit share because that benefits us and the message is more important than the messenger. This morning my time, last night your time. I took a ride share to work instead of taking the normal bus. Um, the driver and I got to chatting. We talked about the U.S. a little bit. He wanted to get, he wanted to know how to go about becoming a citizen. He doesn't speak a lick of English. He's not going to pass the test, even if he stays in the U.S. legally for five years. I told him, you don't want to do that. As we got to chatting some more, he said something about how in America, he sees it on TV at least, there are more white men marrying black women, and he asked why. By the time he asked me this, he knew I was black. This being said, this man um, didn't ask me with any kind of rancor or malice. He knew I was black, and he didn't say anything about black women being unattractive. He simply asked me what the case was because I had told him that America is a racist country. So then he asked me why it was that, that white men were marrying black women. And I uh, wanted to defend black women and say to him, you need to be asking why white, black women are marrying white men. The problem is that that's so evident. And um, I didn't have the moral conscience to tell him that because I know the answer, even though he doesn't. I had to tell him, the African-American woman um, has an inferiority complex. The African-American man had it, but we have to outgrow it by a certain age. We thought that the community was getting over it and we found out later, about three years ago, we found out that for the most part, no, they're not getting over it, maybe even before that. I told this man about Sisbim and Ibmur. Not by name, you can't translate the names into Arabic, but I told him about them. I described them. I said to him, sir, um, there are, there's a group of black men now in the US that get the passports, they take them and they travel. They go to Latin America. I don't know how to say Dominican Republic in the Arabic language. I think it would be uh, Jamhur Dominicia, but um, the thing is I told, what I had to tell him was that we go to Latin America, we go to Africa, and we go to Southeast Asia. And he said, what's the reason? And I said, well, we go there because there we can find black women that don't hate us because we're black. They're getting over the inferiority complex. The African-American woman is not getting over it fast enough. She's angry with us because of what white people did to us. He said, well, why don't they blame the white man? And they're marrying the white man. And I told him exactly. That's exactly. That's why we're having the issue, sir. Because they are willing to marry the grandchildren of the men that ruined the race entirely, that ruined the planet. They prefer that man to us. And the way we know this is because they treat these men differently. You see, we have to be Superman. We got to be rich and tall. We got to have muscles. We got to have a penis that looks like another thigh. You know what that white man has to have to marry a black woman, sir? And he was like, what? And I told him, all he has to do is be willing to marry a black woman. And those are the white men that white women don't want. So if a white man is not attractive to an attractive white woman, then he still has a shot at getting an attractive black woman. And he doesn't even have to protect her. When I told him this, 
the car moved a little bit, kind of shimmied a little bit because he, his arm jerked on the wheel just out of surprise. Like, wait a minute, this man does not have to protect this woman and she will still be with him. I said to him, sir, if I could speak Arabic more quickly, I could tell you a story before we get to my job. But because I can't speak it quickly, it's going to take me a long time to tell you by that time we'll be at my job. Look, sir, this is what happens. I started to tell him about Serena Williams. I realized I wasn't going to be able to speak quickly enough and I abandoned it and just said, look, it's, they don't have to do much. And this is why we will go to these other countries. And the thing is, it made me realize I was used to assuming these questions come from an assumption that the black woman is less beautiful. Maybe, but we was, he was really asking because I told him that America is a racist country still, just like it used to be decades ago. And that's why he asked me the question. Sisters, I'm going to tell you this. I will defend you from any one of these tragic mulattoes that would say something with an assumption that you're less beautiful, less attractive. I will say something in your defense. I will, if they say anything to suggest that you're less attractive than every other woman because you're black, because your nose is wide, your lips are big, your head's nappy, and you, you got melanin, I will defend you. The minute that one of them says something about the attitude of the Western black woman, I'm going to agree. I'm not going to defend you because I don't have a leg to stand on. I can't. I'm going to have to say, actually, the attitude is the problem. There are many who don't have bad attitudes, but they're married. They're not available. That's real. But I want you to tell, I want to tell you this too, that I, I came to understand. And I, re, I came to remember actually from his, this conversation. See, I forgot about something that I used to know. And, I be, and, and, and it's come up before. Arab men do not think that you are as beautiful as any other woman on the planet. They believe every other woman is better looking than you, at least in the face. All of them. They've seen white women that they don't like, that are ugly. But on average, they believe that the white woman is better looking than even their own woman and their own woman is better looking than you. That's how they, they feel. That's how they, they view it. The Indian woman is better looking than you, but not quite as good looking as the Arab woman. And the Arab woman doesn't hold a candle to the white woman in their minds. So they jump over one of their own to marry a white woman if they can get away with it, but there is social pressure on them to marry from their own because of the culture and the custom and the in-laws. Many would prefer to marry their own, but they still say that white woman's gorgeous with the blonde hair and the green eyes or the blue eyes. And, you know, it's, oh, they love that. You do face, you the African-American woman, you do face something else. You see, there are you have to understand that on top of the fact that many other men wrongly believe that you were less attractive because of your phenotype. Well, Aleikum Salaam, you also have to face the fact that because of, of your specific culture, many of them are going to run from you within that particular nationality, within that passport. They're going to flee every time. Because, unfortunately, you're internationally known uh, Forgive the interruption, but the fact is that you are internationally known for having an attitude. Now, some people don't know uh, if it's true or not because they only see the TV, but the image that is abroad is that you got a bad attitude. I will be the one to say, look, there are those who don't have it, but they're married. I'll tell people this if I hear them voice that stereotype. But I want you to understand, you in the States, we got options and you don't. Now, when I say this, I'm not saying this to brag because I'm not the one with the options per se. And not necessarily. I have options, but not as much as, let's say, a taller, more chocolate brother who spent more time in the gym. 
But we collectively have options that you don't because in addition to some men being brainwashed to simply see you as having a nice body but nothing else. And that's assuming the lack of obesity. In addition to that, you specifically from the U.S. and the U.K. and Canada, you got a bad rep for for an attitude. You are seen as being too demanding, too combative and aggressive and loud and rude. That's how they view you. It may be true, it may not, but they look, all they know is what they know. So if you think you're just going to have an easy time stepping out in the U.S., or outside the U.S., I'm telling you, you ain't. And some of you are like, I don't think I don't want no foreign man anyway. I don't. What if I don't want none of them no way? Okay, then you just further limited your options. Because I'm going to tell you the minute, we'll be willing to take you on. The ones that are unfortunate, financially speaking, and need a way to get to the U.S. or need a way to get to a Western country, they will accept. But they're using you. And that's, unfortunately, that's, that's what's out there waiting on you. And that's sad for those of you that are not this way because you got to suffer based on the, the behavior of the ones who were because they took the spotlight, they took the microphone, they took the platform and they spoke for you. Those of you that aren't like this got spoken for by those who are. And they're not going to apologize. The ones with all the neck rolling, eye rolling, finger snapping attitude took the spotlight and made you look bad. And now you don't have any better options than she does, unfortunately, unless you know someone from a particular culture that could speak for you to that community. That that's what you got. I'm sorry. And I don't want it to be this way for those of you that are not part of the problem. But usually you're already married anyway. Thought I'd drop this out there. And just let it be known that you those of you with the attitude, you are not trapping brothers. That's not true. Danielle, the one that was on that live stream with BGS and I forgot who else. She said, it. I'm not going to believe that brothers, we're not, we're not going to change until brothers show us they're willing to leave. She came out and said that. Brothers are doing it. Not only, see, look, brothers are being invited to sometimes to a certain extent. When that happens, Danielle, you don't have any other options that you would want. You only have the option in which you're being used for something and you don't have any better option than that. Sorry. And I don't want that for you. But that's what's late. That's what's out there. It's up to you if, if, if you collectively, plural, you are going to change this before it gets to that point. And I don't think that's what I, I just don't see the collective doing that. Because by the time it is proven to you that we ain't going to tolerate this no more, we don't have to. You got to tolerate whatever the market's going to give you. It'll be too late for you because ain't nobody else going to put up with what us June bugs and shines have put up with for a long time. No one else is going to tolerate it. You can go to other black countries and try that mess and you're going to get slapped in the mouth. And maybe even deported. You don't have the option to continue being who you are and getting what you've been getting. Those days are coming to an end. That's it. Brothers, understand this. You the one with the options. See, when you a teenage boy and they got the tits in the high, in the high school hallway, they give you the impression that you ain't got the option. No, that's not true. You do. Yeah. All it takes is a little money and a passport and a skill and you got options. Use them wisely, though. I hope that what I've said is a benefit. Assalamu alaikum. Black, sign and blackout.